Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. We're a webinar, we're a webcast, we're an online show. Um, what it, the, the, the terminology is up for debate. <laughs> so uh, whatever you want to call us, we are here live online every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, we, um, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show every week and then post it up to our website as well. And I'll show you where that is at the end of today's show. Um, the sh uh, live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share with your colleagues, friends, anyone you think might be interested in any of our topics. And we do a mixture of things here on the show, uh, presentations, min interviews, mini training sessions, book review sessions, <clears throat> basically anything. If it's related to libraries, we are happy to put it on the show. Um, we do sometimes have Nebraska Library Commission staff do presentations, but we also bring in guest speakers, as we have done this morning. On the line with me um, from Eau Claire, Wisconsin, is uh, Jennifer Cook and Peter Rudrid. You can see their names there on the front first slide. Um, they're from the Ellie Phillips Memorial Public Library. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Hey. Um, how's the weather up your way? Are you getting snow in this storm coming through? I wasn't sure. <laughs> No snow today, just really cloudy. Nice. Okay, good. Here, same thing here. <laughs> um, uh, they're on the line here today to talk about um, <clears throat> teaching technology to those people that you do have coming into your library or just into your life, <laughs> technophobes out there, um, a program that they've done at their library, and they're going to share with us how they pulled it off, so uh, potentially you could do it at your own library. So I'll just hand it over to you guys to take over. Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. We're very excited to be sharing our Tech Tuesday program with you. Um, Peter and I worked really hard to bring this program to our library, and we're really proud of it. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Yep, and we hope that uh, what we present today is a scalable example of something that you can implement in your libra library, regardless of its size. So if you have a much smaller library than ours, or much larger, um, it's something you can take parts of and use um, to teach technology to your patrons. What we wanted to present to you first is a quick outline of uh, what we hope to accomplish today. Um, we're going to talk about the background of our library and <clears throat> some circulation stats uh, in terms of our um, electronic resources, our early um, tech help with uh, circulating iPads, uh, our, how we've provided reference desk help to people with technology questions, uh, basically what the crux of our challenge has been, how we promoted our new Tech Tuesdays program, um, what the attendance has been like, some of the common questions we get, what are some of the challenges we've discovered, and some of the lessons learned. Um, and then we're also, if we have time, we're going to talk about some of the other approaches to teaching technology that we've discovered in terms of our research, and we're going to share some resources with you. And we want to make sure to leave time at the end of our presentation, as Krista mentioned, for um, any questions you might have, or it, we're particularly interested if you have manners of teaching technology in your libraries that you would like to share with the, those uh, who are attending today's presentation. So here's a picture of our library. It's a much warmer, sunnier day in this picture. Um, we have, we're the largest library in our system. There's several smaller libraries right around us within a 10, 15 minute drive. A lot of those patrons will sometimes visit our libraries because we're the largest. Um, we're also a college town. We have two colleges here in town, a technical school and a university. We have several high schools and we get over a thousand people through our doors every day. Here's a look at some of our circulation statistics. Now every month our electronic resources go up. Every month we have more Freedian users, more Freegal users, and more Overdrive users. And I would say Overdrive probably is the one that grows the most every month. They have um, the best books. Of course, all of this increase in downloadable media brings more questions to our reference desk. People want to know how to use the services. They want to know how they can download a book. Here's just a screenshot of OverDrive, it's Wisconsin's digital library. This is what our library uses. Um, we also have Freeding and Freegal. Um, OverDrive has eBooks and audiobooks, and it also has inter we've introduced in the last few um, weeks the new magazines, which is 
really good and we've had a lot of new users just because of the magazines. Some of our early technology here at the library were, were our iPads. We were one of the first libraries in the nation to circulate iPads. Starting in 2011, we got a generous grant that was able to let us buy the iPads. They've circulated over 2,000 times so far. We have 15 here in the library that people can check out. They get to keep them for two weeks, and then they bring them back, and we restore them and, and take them to the next person. We also have two that are available to use here in the library for four hours, so people can use them here with our Wi-Fi. And then we have two for reference for training. We use them at our Tech Tuesday programs. It's been a really popular service, and we've had questions from libraries all over asking how we do it and, and what works best for us. So that was some of our early technology. Of course, when you bring in an iPad and you have access to programs like Overdrive and Freeding, you're going to start getting questions about it. Some of the first things we did is we created flyers and some video tutorials, and we posted them on our website. On our website, we still have the flyers that we'll hand out to patrons, um, and those are available for anyone to look at. We also started some iPad classes. We had iPad class, iPads here in the library for people to use, so we wanted to put them in people's hands and teach them how to use the downloadable media. We had, so we created three sessions of an iPad class. We had 10 people per class to try to keep it to a manageable size. We had two staff members at the class, and as people signed up, we asked them to bring their device and to know what their Apple ID and their password was. The second person who was at the class went around the table to help people who got stuck. In every class, there was always at least one person who, of course, didn't have their Apple ID. They didn't know it. They didn't remember it. They were stuck. They couldn't follow through with the rest of the class. So that second staff member was really important for that. If someone wanted to learn what downloadable media was all about or practice with an iPad, we did let them use one of ours. We created some fake um, Apple IDs to let them use that. And then the class kind of ran through going through all of our, our downloadable media. So we introduced them to Freeding. We had them download an ebook. We had them download a song from Freegal. We took them to Overdrive, and they did a book and an audio book. And at the time, we had one click digital, so we ran them through that one as well. We did two sets of the classes. They all filled up. And actually, some of the people who took the first class were still a little unsure, so they took the second class as well. So those were really a good thing to start with here at our library. So again, like I mentioned a couple times, when you have all this technology available, people are going to need to know how to use it. We have three types of patrons that we saw pretty often. We had the first type who would come to our desk. They'd ask about an ebook. How did they get it? They would take our handout, and they would go away. They would go home. They would download the ebook. We'd probably never see them again. Maybe they'd ask one or two follow-up questions over the phone. Um, but they were pretty self-motivated self there. We have the second type who comes to our reference desk quite often. These are the ones who say, I don't know anything about computers. They have a question. They really want you to do it for them. They don't want to learn. They don't want to talk about it. They just want you to do it for them. A lot of times these are one-time users. They need something off the Internet. They come in. You help them do it, and you never see them again. Then you have the patrons who are the, in the middle, and these are the ones that we, we really created this program for. They want to learn how to use the technology. They want to download an audiobook, but they're really nervous, and they're really unsure, and they, haven't, they don't have much experience with technology, and they really want you to sit with them and go through it step by step. We simply didn't have the time at our reference desk to help these patrons. We're a busy desk, we're staffed by two people, we get a lot of phone calls, a lot of computer questions, a lot of people need help finding books, and we just simply didn't have the 20 minutes it took to, to walk these people through step by step. And these are the people that we wanted to help. We also have a few staffing issues. Um, 
we have people on our staff who are not as familiar with technology and sometimes those of us who are more familiar weren't on the desk so they weren't really to help them either so so that brings us to the challenge we had when we uh, launched our Tech Tuesday program which is how to offer assistance to these patrons who have technology questions and have it be more specifically individual and you know and make ample time to answer their questions but do this in a, such a fashion that we're not uh, uh, jeopardizing our service to other patrons. A common scenario um, when we would be helping patrons with their technology questions, maybe they had a question about how to down download an ebook or how to use their smartphone or about creating a social media account like Twitter or Facebook, was that once we got into answering their question, you could look over their shoulder and see that a line of people, other, other customers had lined up. And so we were encountering this in such a fa in such frequency that we knew that we had to do something, and we had to change our service model. So uh, we created Tech Tuesdays, and Tech Tuesdays is our uh, as in its inception was offered once a month for two hours from two to four on Tuesday, and uh, you would know that you would come in and you would uh, be uh, uh, greeted by two staff members would then be there and be, be able to patiently sit with you and answer your technology questions. Um, one of our earliest challenges was how to get the word out that we're now offering this new service. So promotion became uh, a very important um, task to undertake. Um, we use social media so we would post about our upcoming Tech Tuesdays on our Facebook. Um, we created a flyer that we would deliver to our local senior center and other organizations that might be interested in this sort of service. Um, and we also created in-house promotional uh, flyers. Um, and I did speak with Krista, and uh, a little later on I'll show you one of those flyers. And I'm going to make it available um, after this presentation if anyone is cares to look at it uh, and have it, a copy of it that they may want to repurpose for their own library. And that same sort of approach led to us to do sort of the same flyer information on our in-library um, in video displays. Um, a, a real common occurrence was it would be in the point of helping a patron, uh, a word of mouth suggestion that they do sign up for or uh, are aware of uh, our Tech Tuesday offering. So when we're helping people and we get to a point where we realize that their question is going to take too much time, then we would try to encourage them to come to Tech Tuesdays. But uh, well, here, here's an example of our Tech Tuesday flyer. Um, this is one that we just recently used up through December. Um, and you can see there it's, uh, it lists um, what we do and we don't do. I'm going to read these out because it's important. Um, you know, we suggest that we'll help with the following. Usage of your personal devices such as e-readers, tablets, laptops, and smartphones. Basic computer skills. How to save files to a USB flash drive. Office productivity software, word processing, spreadsheets, presentations, internet searching, library resources, social media, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest. So we're not confined to just uh, devices. We're also helping you with software and for basic computer skills. And uh, another thing that's extremely important to get across early on is the things that we will not be able to help you with. And we have had people who come in with more uh, involved technical questions that are really beyond the scope of what we can help with. Uh, for example, they want us to run diagnostics on their computer, uh, troubleshoot uh, uh, issues that are not related to our database offerings or overdrive, but you know are really in-depth sort of uh, tech questions that we really don't have the time or resources to help with, and then um, install software, um, which is something that you know for a number of reasons we don't want to be involved with doing. So. We just try to be upfront about that, give them an idea of what we do do, what, when we offer it, and then what we're not able to help with. In terms of promotion, our best promotion by far was a news release we created. So uh, we have a, the help of a promotion department here at our library, and they helped us draft a news release that went out to the local media entities, radio, television, and, um, and newspapers. And we had a... Um, had a you know just a short notice you can see to the right there that was featured in um, our local leader telegram our largest uh, newspaper here in Eau Claire and uh, I think we kind of lost track that we had put this news release out and Jennifer and I came in to do our normal monthly 
Tech Tuesday, uh, the following Tuesday after it had, had been in the Sunday paper, and we walked up to a table that had, I was, you know, had standing room only. We had, a, we had, uh, I think, close to 15 or 16 people there, and sure enough, when we surveyed well, how they heard about our program, they all said it was, um, it was through the newspaper. So, you know, don't take it for granted. We have a lot of. Uh, Maybe even non-library users who are avid newspaper readers who will check those community um, events bulletins and want to, you know, will discover your program and be very excited to join you. So uh, that's a little bit about how we promoted it. Um, I would say, you know, in, in summary, by far the best, um, the most success we've had in promoting is in word of mouth. Uh, just getting the word out and when we are addressing or having a conversation with a patron at our reference desk to make sure to promote that, that we have this as an option and encourage them to come and make sure that they understand when it's offered. Jennifer is now going to talk to us a little bit about what sort of attendance we've had. We were really excited when we launched the program that we had six people right away at the first one. We hadn't done a whole lot of promotion for the first one. We were kind of see how it was going. But we had six people. As you can see, we did have a couple bigger ones, including the one in March, which was after the, the ad. But overall, the attendance has been really steady. We have four, five, six people every month. Some of them are brand new users. They have a specific question. They get it answered, and they're happy. Some of them are repeat users, something that we had gone over the month before and they had played with it and they just had a couple follow-up questions and they'll come back or they have a whole new question and they had remembered that they got their question answered the month before so they'll come back. So we have a little mix of both, repeats and new people. Some of the common questions that we've gotten at, the, at Tech Tuesdays. A big one is our downloadable media resources that we offer our library users. OverDrive is probably our biggest one. People come in with their tablet and they want to know how to download a book. They're not, they're a little nervous. As you can see in my picture here, this is one of my favorite couples, Joan and Ben. And Joan had gotten her brand new Kindle Fire for Valentine's Day. She really wanted to know how to download a book. So I sat with her and I took her through it step by step. And we got a book, and she was very happy. Freeding is another one. That one is one, another one of our ebook apps. We get a lot of questions on freeding. Email. We have people who are confused about email. I have one lady who comes in, I think, almost every month. She's confused about the difference between typing in gmail.com on her web browser and using her email in the Gmail app that she has. So oftentimes she'll mean to send an email to someone and she's on her internet browser and she'll type in like Florida and all these articles about Florida will come up and she's confused because she really wanted to send it to her aunt or her friend. So that's a kind of a common question. We'll get questions about other apps. I want to download a game. How do I do that? I need a game that doesn't require Wi-Fi. It works here in the library, but it doesn't work at my house. So we'll download the app, we'll turn off the Wi-Fi, we'll see if it works. We get a lot of photo questions. People have a full flash drive, they want to take more pictures, but they don't know how to get it onto their computer. So we'll do some of that. We help them set up new devices. We've had people come to Tech Tuesday, they have a brand new device in the box. They hand us the box and they're like, I don't know what to do. So we'll help them get it set up, create their their user IDs, their, get their Apple ID, and kind of get it set up. Oftentimes these are some of our repeat customers because one Tech Tuesday will help them get it set up and then we'll tell them to play with it and they'll come back next month with another question. Cloud storage. No one understands the cloud and we get a lot of questions about the cloud. Some of the other things we get asked about, social media. I helped a lady create a Pinterest account and taught her how to pin things on different boards. We get questions about Skype or FaceTime. We, <laughs> one time a lady wanted to learn how to FaceTime and she didn't really understand how it worked and you could see, you can see the other person. So I actually FaceTimed my son at home and he popped up on the screen and she thought that was pretty funny. 
Um, we've had people do it right at Tech Tuesday. We teach them how. They email someone right there at the at the class. So that's kind of fun as well. Um, we obviously helped with a lot of other things. These are those are some of our most common ones. Along the way, we've had some challenges. So these are some of the most common challenges that we have encountered. The first one is passwords. People forget their passwords. They have a list of passwords sometimes, and they don't know which one is the right password. So we're ready to download a book, and we're going to download the OverDrive app onto their iPad, and they don't know their Apple ID. This is a big one, and there's not a lot we can do about it. We can take them through the step, the the, the process when you've forgotten your password and it gets emailed to them. Um, sometimes this is a little frustrating for people and once they hit a snag they're a little less reluctant to to continue. So pass, passwords is a big one. Another big one is just the reluctance to learn. We don't get as much of this at Tech Tuesday as we do just at the regular reference desk but we get more of the fact that people are afraid. They're afraid to touch their device. They're afraid to just play with it. They're afraid they're gonna break it. So what we like to do is walk them through step by step and just tell them the best way to learn is to play with it. The picture we had earlier of Ben and Joan, Joan is so afraid of her device. She was afraid she was gonna break it. Attendance is sometimes a challenge. Large attendance, 10 people, the weeks that we've had 10 people, that was hard. We can't get to everyone at once. We have to go around the table. Everyone wants their question answered. It's a little challenging. It's a little nerve-wracking when you go out there and there's 10 people and they're all ready with a question. Small attendance is a little bit, it's not, it's not a big challenge, but we're ready to help and we've set aside those two hours off the desk and if there's only one person then you know, we want to be available in case someone shows up. So that one is a little hard as well. N people not being able to work their device. They just don't know how. They've never played with it. They're a little, f this one's hard too. We really have to um, just teach them the very basics, how to tap the screen, how to to type on that little keyboard. So that one's a little hard as well. And this is a big one. People come the next week. We've walked them through step by step how to download an ebook or an app, and they've forgotten or they, they want to do it again. And they come to the desk and they see Peter and I at the desk, and we're working our regular reference shift. And they sit down with their device and they want us to walk them through it again. And like we mentioned earlier, one of the reasons that we developed Tech Tuesday was we don't have time to do that at the desk. It's hard and we have people lining up. And so they're kind of expecting the same thing that they had the week before and we just can't give it to them. We have to encourage them to come back to the next Tech Tuesday. Okay, so um, in the course of doing this service, uh, and we've done it for about a year and a half now, we have learned some lessons that we want to share with you. Um, and the first one I have up here is to create expectations. Um, we have our, you know, we have a couple tables that we set aside for doing Tech Tuesdays, and uh, so people find their way and are seated there when we show up. And before we even start um, doing Tech Tuesdays, we uh, say a little piece about uh, what we can and cannot do, and we also explain to them a little bit about how Tech Tuesdays is um, handled in terms of uh, there's more than one person here usually. Uh, and we're going to try to help everyone. Uh, they have to be patient because we are going to be moving from person to person. So we might get you started on a task and then check back in with you. Uh, so it's very important that they have that understanding before they sit down and they don't think that it's going to be just uh, you know, direct one-on-one -on -one help because uh, while we do a lot of that, it's not always the case that we're able to do that the entire session. And um, we also let them know how much time we have. Um, so, uh, you know, we're going to be there for two hours. Uh, we're not able to stay later because we have to get back on the desk or do something else. So, um, you know, just sometimes we'll get people who um, 
will have a very broad question for uh, you know what they want help with. They'll say, "I want help with. I want to learn everything." And we can kind of help them by saying, "Well, uh, in the time we have today, what, what's the first thing you want to learn, or what's what's the most important thing you need to, to master today?" So, talking to them about what uh, what time we have and letting them know is a really important thing to, to mention up front as well. And uh, as I mentioned before, having to help everyone, we want to make sure that they know that you know they they're not going to sit. Uh, and this has happened uh, enough that it's worth mentioning. We've started to help. Say we have a group of six people, and uh, we've made our uh, um, declaration that we're here to help everyone. Well, and you know, oftentimes we do have one person who just feels like they're not getting enough attention, and so we really have to, you know, it's important to stress that and and to you know check back in with them and say, explain to them where we're at in terms of. I'm going to be with you shortly, or I'm just finishing up with this person. I'll be with you in a second. How are you doing? You know, those kind of things are very helpful to check in. And as I mentioned when I showed the flyer, we always are upfront with about the limits of what we can do. Um, so you know, we've had people who brought in servers or printers and and wanted to help set them up, and it's kind of abstract, and we can't really do that. So uh, we don't want to get too far in the conversation without uh, um, letting them know letting them know what we can and cannot do. And this is a really important one. Jennifer and I both claim to be uh, uh, proficient in technology, but by no means experts. So uh, we offer our patrons patience and a willingness to stick with them and to, you know, to learn with them at times. So we're, we're not adverse to bringing up a YouTube video or downloading a manual or discovering something with one of our print manuals. So these are all approaches we take and they don't speak to being an expert. They just speak to someone who is interested and is willing to work with you. Um, and some of the key lessons we learned is importance of when, we, when we're starting uh, our program, we want to learn everyone's name right off the bat. So we introduce ourselves and then I go around using those sort of mnemonic phrases and stuff too, like associating someone who says their name is Kathy with, oh, okay, my Aunt Kathy. I'll remember this person by, by that. And so I have a clue and I'm able to use their name as, as often as possible. It really helps in terms of the whole conversation to continually reference their name and, and return to it. It just makes them feel more welcome. Um, Break up the steps into small parts and avoiding overwhelming concepts. So if we're going to be talking about downloading an, an ebook, we're not going to quickly go through all the steps and overwhelm them and then expect them to follow through. We're going to break it down into like these are the three main concepts we're going to be doing. Here's the first part. Let's just do this part. Okay, do you understand that? Okay, now we're going to go to the next part. Very important to keep it simple and, and slowly work your way through it. And then not just taking over, um, using using it up as an opportunity to let them uh, do the steps. So not not feeling frustrated that it's taking too long, but but wait and have patience for them to to do the steps themselves. You're empowering them by doing that. So you want to make sure that you are resisting your desire just to get to get to the solution quickly. They have to learn, and they're only going to learn by doing. And this has a kind of a wonderful offshoot of our program is oftentimes we'll have people who have more technology skills than, uh, than other, other attendees and they are recognized right away and they say, oh, you know, I've done this before. I did this last time I attended Tech Tuesdays. Let me help you with this. And when we do, um, when we do, uh, do our introductions, we break um, the group into, you know, some people have questions about their laptops. Maybe some people have questions about overdrive or e-readers. So, very often time a person in one of those little subgroups is more of an expert and will chime in and will help out while we're helping another patron. That's great to see. It creates an environment and a culture where we're helping each other. And as I mentioned before, starting from the beginning, always starting from the beginning, making sure that they accomplish it on their own, work through the steps, and then once they get to the, uh, to the end, for example, when I'm helping someone with overdrive, I will um, log them out and I'll go back to their um, desktop of their whatever device they are and I'll say, now let's find that app again and I want to see you do it. So, you know, just so they feel extreme confidence that they can do it on their own. And that means beginning over, starting over and going through and reiterating and strengthening your conversation with them about all the steps you've discussed. 
And the big one we did is um, Jennifer's already spoken to the fact that we've had a lot of reaction to this Tech Tuesday uh, program. We've had interest. Uh, we've had people asking when it's going to be offered again. We've had people show up more than once. And we've had times when we've been overwhelmed by the number of attendees. So after some consideration and after uh, exploring uh, other options, we decided to uh, expand our, our offering and offer uh, individual one-to-one -one appointments rather than just our monthly uh, drop-in. So now we offer our Tech Tuesday normally on the second Tuesday of every month, but the first, third, and fourth, and maybe even fifth Tuesday of the month, we'll do a one-to-one -one appointment and we'll schedule it. And we have two staff member who help, members who help with these and they're either at 10 a.m. or at 6 p.m. So we're also exploring making it more convenient to your schedule. And this is a great option. Um, we have had to limit it to one Tech Tuesday uh, appointment per patron because we had some uh, patrons who just started to want to sign up every every week and we wanted to be fair and equitable to other people who are be interested in our, our offering. But it's been a great um, alternative and a selling point to say, um, it's been great to get started on this conversation with you about this technology question. Would you like to set up a one-to-one -one appointment when we can spend the whole hour just you and I working on something? And so it's really taken off. Uh, the first months that we've done this, we have booked up all of our appointments. So we're at a point now where we're going to consider whether or not we need to offer more one-to-one -one appointments. But we also felt it was a good idea to keep that drop-in as well because we want to um, basically brand that as an opportunity that's going to happen every month and people have become comfortable with expecting it on that second Tuesday. So we don't want that to go away. So we're just adding to it to make sure our service is um, uh, you know, complete and available to everyone. And this is an example of what I mentioned earlier about scalable. Maybe you just want to do the once a month and see how it goes. Or maybe you want to start with appointments. These are both options and we've tried them both and this is what's worked for us in our library. And I mentioned some other approaches. I had I know of another library in Wisconsin uh, that's tried doing um, training requests that come by email or phone. They uh, direct them towards a staff person who has a proficiency or expressed an interest in helping with this type of question. So they have kind of a master list and say that this staff person is particularly strong on cloud issues. This person is great on setting up e-readers. This person is uh, really great at answering questions about social media accounts. And so depending on what the question is, then they will email, um, they'll do a, a short reference interview and they'll send the details of the, the, the patron's request to that person and have them follow up with the person. Another one is doing what we've all, all done in, in the past is wet handouts and website tutorials. It's kind of a foundation of tech service and libraries. You have those handouts you can hand to someone or you reference a already created webinar or tutorial on your website or, or another one that's created elsewhere and you have it available and so people can go and consider that. And we have done a tech petting zoo. It's uh, something that's great to do like around the holidays the time, this time of year where you have a bunch of different types of devices available and staff there to answer questions and you just have them around. Uh, last one we did was in a, one of our meeting rooms and we had, a, we had about a half, well, I guess we had about eight or nine devices spread around a table and you could, uh, you could look at, we had uh, sort of a supporting flyers that explain some of the different features of each device and we had staff people there who were ready to talk to you if you were interested in picking one up and playing with it. Um, so that's another thing you can do to uh, encourage people to be hands-on with their technology and to try new things. Um, another approach that's seen by a local library here in Chippewa Falls, uh, which is a neighboring town to the north of Eau Claire, is technology taught by teenagers. And it's always a very attractive idea. So they did this back in November and early in December this year, where they had um, high school students come in and avail themselves to teach technology for uh, you know on a weekly basis and what is, it's such a great idea to match those two communities together with helping each other learn about technology all right so I wanted to offer some additional resources and then leave time for some questions at the end and we're very anxious to hear what you want to hear more about um, the Wild Wisconsin Winter Web Conference is held here in Wisconsin yearly, and we really uh, enjoyed a presentation called Six Essential Skills for One-to-One -one Tech Instruction by Crystal Schimpf. Um, and uh, I believe that you can probably find that um, online. It's still archived. 
there's also this e-reader detective module for helping to instruct people on how to use e-readers. Um, some other digital literacy resources I have here are the PLA's Professional Tools for Digital Literacy and digitalliteracy.gov. It's a destination for digital literacy resources and wanted to uh, direct you towards that. So I'm now going to turn it back over to uh, Krista and to see if you all have any questions and like I mentioned earlier, particularly interested if you have approaches to teaching technology in your library that you'd care to share to everyone at in attendance today. Thanks for your time. All right, great. Thank you very much, Peter and Jennifer. Um, yes, we do have some questions that have come up, and many of them that you actually ended up answering, I believe. But um, we can go through them um, anyways here. Oh, we do just have one comment. Um, someone says, they love that you are the experts. You are experts and willing to learn with the patron. Um, in downloading manuals and finding videos, you're modeling for the patron how they can find info for themselves. Exactly what you said about empowering them. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important, yeah. Um, someone did ask about if your time is was two to four, but you did explain that you've expanded it now. But another question that is good to you, though, from the same person, is it mainly seniors who are retired who need the service? Um, you talked about what kinds of things they ask for, but what kinds of patrons are you helping? Is it a whole range? Is, you know... We have seen mostly seniors. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while we'll get some younger people but a lot of them are seniors. I wouldn't say they're all retired. No. And I would say that our appointments, especially the evening appointments, are from some, do have some younger people. The two to four once a month, we do see a lot of older people. So I would say mainly seniors, but some of the other as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's just our library. It may be different at yours. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, it's going to vary depending on what your, your population is. Yeah. Um, and then someone wanted to know if you offer this out in the middle of the library or do you have a closed off room for this? So um, when we created this program, we thought it very important to do it right out in the middle of the library. So we wanted people to walk by it and to pay it, you know, to take note and say, what's going on over there? And to ask questions and to, you know, for it to be not necessarily disruptive, but to be in the, you know, the whole flow of things that's happening in our library. So it's unlike other programs we've done, our, our meeting rooms are on the lower level of the library. So you have to kind of go out of your way to get to them. And they're really not noticed by uh, the programs that are, that are happening down there. It's hard for you to, if you're just normally using the library to be aware of them. So mm. we very much have felt it important to have it, you know, directly out and open. And so we have signage. We experimented with some arrow signage to get people to the tables, but that hasn't been necessary. People become comfortable with it too. And it's close enough to our reference desk that if someone comes up and wants to know where it's being offered, we can just point them over there too. Mm. But yeah, definitely great idea to have it just right out and open. We felt. Yeah, definitely convenient and right right where they can see it and get to it. Uh, let's see what do we got here. Ah, what's your no show rate like for the scheduled appointments? Do you have people that don't you know We've had show. a few, but not very many. Yeah. Um after the first couple of weeks we realized maybe a couple of people were forgetting, so we instructed mm -hmm. one of our assistants um, whoever was working Monday, they do make a reminder phone call, and then mm -hmm. the few that we've had not show up, that's really stopped. Yeah. People really do keep the appointments. And if they've booked an appointment, say, a month in advance, and we allow, we, we usually have appointments available two months out, and they get that reminder phone call on a Monday, uh, and now they have a conflict in their schedule, the fact that we've made that reminder phone call allows them to call us back and say, oh, sorry, I'm now not available. You can open that up to someone else. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, we haven't got to the point where we have a waiting list, but you see that sort of courtesy, and that's and we really haven't had a lot of no shows since we started doing the reminder calls. Mm. That's good, yeah. Um, here's the next one. Where do the devices for the petting zoo come from? Does the library purchase these, or staff have their own that they loan? Where do the actual equipment come from? A little bit of both. Um, our library, we have, and uh, we have. Um, what do we have? We have iPad uh, Airs. iPad Airs. We have Kindles. We have a Nook. We have a, a Surface d d uh, sort of tablet, um, and Kindle Fire. Um, so, and then to augment that, we'll we'll ask other staff members to bring in their other devices. But we've never had to like spe specifically rent or purchase something just for a technology petting zoo. Mm -hmm. So also related to that, um, if does it get 
how, really busy for the petting zoo, how do you make sure someone's concerned? How do you make sure the devices don't disappear or, or walk away, you know, with the patrons that are trying to use them, like security basically? <laughs> I think that's a really important question. It's something I thought about um, when we did ours. I, so I think we overstaffed because we wanted to make sure we had someone who could stand by the door. It was someone who wasn't directly going to be distracted by helping someone and could kind of pay attention to this. Uh, but I honestly, we don't haven't done uh, another technology petting zoo in a while since we started this Tech Tuesday thing be, uh, service, simply because we didn't get a great response. We did it last winter, and. Um, thinking that it would be a great thing to do around this time of year on the holidays and we were kind of underwhelmed with the number of people who came so we almost had a one-to-one -one ratio between people who were there and people we were helping so and I but I would say this um, this is not always the case I know other libraries have done technology petting zoos and you know been uh, been uh, welcomed a lot of patrons so keeping the security thing in mind is a great point to bring up we also have theft detection things that I have on all of our in-house, like our Kindle Fire and our iPad. I put a theft detector thing on there, so if they tried to go out the doors with them, it would beep. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's something you just have, regardless of the fact of having the uh, petting zoo. Right, right, yeah. yeah. Um, all right, someone says that I teach classes for Apple and Android devices and for all of our downloading services. Oh, I see, teach classes. We offered appointments but found that people would come in and just assume they could sit down with someone at any time. And I know you said that they started doing that. That's why you set up the appointments. Are you still having that kind of issue? You've kind of gotten the word out that you, you really got to come at a time when we set this up? Or do you still have on-the-fly people that you have to... I really don't think you ever get away from that because yeah. once people get accustomed to recognizing you as a person who helps with the technology, they see you at the desk and they want to come up and ask you or they reference you to, to someone else. So, I mean, the best we can do is to um, encourage people uh, when they come with the questions to reschedule or to come back uh, when we have more time. Uh, we can gauge how much how in depth their question is and try to answer it quickly, but then say this is all the time I'm going to have right now. Kind of like how we would approach a more in depth research to tech, uh, reference question. Yeah, I was going to say any reference, any reference question, not even technology related, you may have to do the yeah. same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of the equivalent of saying um, I'm not able to help with it now, but I'll call you back. Uh, is you know when's a convenient time to reach you? Well, we can say I can't help you with this right now, but we do have these appointments that might be convenient to your schedule. Can you come back for one of those? So mm -hmm. people seem to um, uh, appreciate that, but I would not. I would be dishonest if I said that we still don't uh, <laughs> confuse people, and people really still really like the the one to one. Oh, and, sure. and be to head us up whenever they see us. So yeah. But that's great because we're creating this culture of conversation about technology and they don't feel mm -hmm. they feel comfortable asking us questions and they get new questions and they you know they want to work with us. So, right, right. Yeah. Um someone says you mentioned that Nook users have to bring in their own computer to in, to make do the interface. Do you not have computers with Adobe Digital Editions in the library that they can do that with? We don't. We don't have Adobe Digital Editions on any of our computers, and it's for patron privacy because they have to put in their own information. Right, and yeah. If someone really wants to learn how, we do have a laptop. We can demonstrate it with, like, our account, but in order for them to do it on their device, we really recommend that they bring in their own laptop because, again, once they get home, they have to do it on their laptop anyway. Right. And so it's better to get it all set up on theirs so then they don't have to go through the whole process again at home. And this could be something, would this be something that you might also have some sort of a handout with, like, step-by-step -step instructions, too, if they don't bring yes, in their I own? So, yeah. Yeah, I have instructions for every possibility on our website. And those are something that's freely available. If anyone's interested in t looking at those instruction uh, handouts that we have, you could just visit our, our library website, ecpubliclibrary.info, and uh, you'll see, uh, you'll, you'll find, and if, if we can help you, uh, find those instructions. They're on the, right on the main page, there's a downloadable media tab, and they're all right on that Yep, page. there it is right there, yeah. Um, yeah. And I'll just mention while we're talking about that, um, any of the links that were in the presentation for everyone watching, I'm grabbing them as, a, as they were mentioning them, and we put them into our delicious account here at the Library Commission, and they'll all be collected together for you guys um, to find them later. So you don't have to try and write down the URLs or search them out yourself. I'll give them all to you afterwards. Um, Thanks, Krista. 
let's see, what's this next one? Here? Oh, someone just explained the same way they do it that um, they detect times a number of, at a number of libraries. I'll show them how to do something, then back out and have them have them do it themselves. Um, and people seem to prefer the professional hand the personal hand holding like what you're doing rather than just being directed to videos themselves. But they'll take handouts and things to go home and do it like what you were just describing. So mm -hmm. basically, work in the same way at someone other another person's library. Um, here's the last one we have so far. Um, I work in a small library and the only employee. We are not overly busy and I usually have time to give one-on-one -on -one instruction, but I do have requests and have considered having a small class, but I'm not overly wise when it comes to technology and would like to brush up on myself before holding one. Um, any tips for a crash course that's brought a broad range of technology? So basically for her to learn, for the librarian to learn um, about it before... Uh, teaching themselves well I know in our in our library consortium which is the Indian Head Federated Library System they do have some basic computer skills and technology sort of webinars and resources like that too Learning Express is something as a database that we subscribe to in here in Wisconsin uh, that offers some e easy technology classes um, mm -hmm. lynda.com is a, as a database oh, that yeah. we offer here in our, in our library uh, Khan Academy also has a great number of courses, and I can't mm -hmm. I can't tell you how often I just lean on YouTube. I simply go and I look to YouTube about whatever I'm looking for, and someone's already done the work. You know, someone's already explained how to do this process or to use this software or to set up this device, and uh, I really benefit a lot from looking at those videos. Uh, I'm I'm guessing there's probably maybe something in Nebraska and the, your your overall library consortium too that maybe offers some technology. Um, yeah, we have various databases that we do have here, um, <clears throat> but um, I'm just including the general ones here because we do have people attending today from all over the country. <laughs> sure. yeah, um, so, yeah, I would just say, yeah, look into your local, yeah, see, do you have a state library who offers things um, or some sort of consortiums that you're part of that would have um, already signed up for some of these things that aren't free and out there? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, there's there also the three. someone just mentioned another one here. The um, I'm gonna get up the link. Go ahead, Jennifer, while I get this one up. <laughs> oh, I was just gonna say, you know, it's the same thing I tell my patrons: just practice. Sometimes people will come in and they'll ask me a question I have no idea, so I just like push buttons. Mm -hmm. um, so, <laughs> mm -hmm. so pick two or three things that you really want to teach people and just practice them over and over and over. And that's what I tell my patrons too: get really convinced you know, get really comfortable with those three things and then add a fourth thing later. So, you know, just play with it. Mm -hmm. And I hope sometimes, because I know a lot of people are just afraid to just push the buttons or whatever, as you said, the people who are afraid of their um, technology to begin with. Um, but I wonder if um, seeing you doing it and seeing you being so comfortable Mm -hmm. You know, as an I example, a that's time. a good example. Yeah, um, the yeah, good. That all the time. Yeah, the one that someone just also suggested, the Goodwill Community Foundation. It's GCF Learn Free, and I'm adding it to the links. They have a lot of good um, free tutorials as well. Yep, that's one that's um, offered by our consortium too. A couple of people too. mentioned that, um, mm -hmm. and someone else actually mentions um, Tech Boomers. Have you looked at that yet? Yeah, they're actually new. Um, it's a new website uh, just created in the last year where they have a lot of resources. And we're actually having an Encompass Live about that in a couple of months. Mm -hmm. um, but have you heard of that at all, Tech Boomers? No, um, no. Um, well, I don't know much about it myself yet because we haven't had the show yet. But um, it's a free educational website um, for teaching people basic computer skills. And some of the things they even have on there is things like how to buy things through bestbuy.com. How hmm. to go watch things on? I'm just looking at their stage now. Um, how to use ESPN.com? So even not just you know technology things, and they've got Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. Um, so a lot of short little um, things too, and it's also free. Mm -hmm. um, well, some, question. Yeah, but we do have a. We just happen to have them. They're going to be on the show in a couple of months. Let's see. What else do we have for questions? Do do do. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
Ah, someone has a suggestion that they learned from the library of, of in this, I assume, State Library of Virginia. Um, someone who is unfamiliar about or uncomfortable, don't know how to use the touch screens, um, like tapping things, swiping things, moving things around, um, have them download and play Angry Birds. Mm, that yeah. you, the games are they teach them how and that's true yeah that how do you wipe mm -hmm. swipe things how do you tap things how do you get into different sections that a game could help them you know a gamify it <laughs> mm -hmm. it's a great suggestion yeah all right any other questions from anybody you can type them in I've gone through all the ones that are on here so far I'm just making sure I haven't missed anything um, And while we just, if anybody has any other questions, type them in. We'll grab them. Um, I would just ask uh, Jennifer and Peter. Um, we usually do when we do the recordings, put up the um, a link to the slides, or I can put your slides on our SlideShare account if you have a preference for that. Um, um, we'll probably share them, and you can upload them yourself on your yeah, SlideShare. That's I can fine. Link to anything, if you have it somewhere yourself, that's fine too. Don't we don't okay. right now? No. Okay, no problem. Yeah, email them to me afterwards, and we'll get that out to all you guys. Um, the only last question we have, which is a little off topic, <laughs> um, are you the same Peter that worked on uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000? I am. Oh, <laughs> good. Oh my gosh. All right. Sorry, a little fangirling going on here, I guess. <laughs> and just totally off topic. Are you going to be coming back with the new Kickstarter that they are doing? That they just I am successfully? not. No, I am. Oh, this darn. is a, uh, working as a librarian is a second career for me, so, so I've kind now. of left that that career behind. And I've been asked many times, but yeah, I worked on it, the show for the last three seasons, uh, original show, and I'm very excited that it's coming back. But yeah, the be... name was familiar, and also to someone else in our audience here. Yeah, we uh, very excited that it's coming back now. Anyway, so. <laughs> Anybody have any last uh, questions about libraries or technology <laughs> to ask? I'd just like oh, to uh, say to everyone, just uh -huh. as a closing, this has been a really good program for us. And every day that you do this and you see how happy people are after they've downloaded their book, it really makes your whole week. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you need an ego boost, <laughs> put this program on and you'll feel it every week. It is, yeah. The, I, I some of the things you're mentioning, I, re I recognize from my own interactions with people here or um, my own family, um, uh, trying to get them. And once my mother has gotten into, uh, she's all about Apple and iPad now, and it's been very, you know, teaching her how to do things on there. My sister and I both are librarians, so she kind of bounces back between us <laughs> for mm -hmm. technology help. But I am that's the same kind of thing as you get in the library as well, that suddenly she's now doing things and sending me stuff and texting me and it's yeah yeah, it's they very can, they can, yeah they can get there so does anybody have any we're almost we still got about five minutes left in the hour anybody have any other last minute urgent questions they want to ask before we log off uh, you will have do you have their contact information here I'm sure Jennifer and Peter will be happy to answer any other questions you have uh, the slides and the links and the recording will all be available to everyone afterwards um, probably later this afternoon I'll have everything processed and ready to uh, send out to you no nope, it doesn't look like anything anybody has anything desperate they need to ask right now so I think we'll uh, wrap it up thank you very much um, Peter and Jennifer, this is great. Um, I just said at the beginning, hoping that this is something that people can use to um, scale to their libraries. I think you've given a lot of good information that they can, um, will be able to do that uh, and use a lot of these tips um, wherever they are. Because um, a lot of this definitely can be, you know, the smallest library person, single person can, can put together something like this. Maybe for them it might only be one hour a week. You know, it's going to vary, as you said, depending on your um, population at your library. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We're glad to be here. Yep. Right. Thanks a lot, everyone, for attending. Okay. All right. I'm going to pull back presenter control to my screen here now. Let's see. Make it get up. There we go. Uh, and um, this is, I was telling you, this is our delicious account where I've added a lot of the links to here. Um, I'll go through the slides, make sure I didn't miss anything um, when um, you guys send them to me and add them as well. Uh, as I said, the show has been recorded. 
and will be available on our website. Over here is our Encompass Live website where we have our upcoming shows. And down here right underneath all of them is a link to our archives where we post. Um, let's see if we have one that has recordings, links, and slides all go here. So they'll be there for everyone to watch. And um, as I said, later today we'll probably get all that organized and everything will be ready to go. Um, so look for that there. Also, join us for any of our other course, our, our sessions we have coming up. Our shows here through December, January, and into February already are listed. So please do go ahead and um, register for any of those. Um, next week on the show will be our best new teen books of 2015. Um, this is uh, Sally Snyder, who is our uh, coordinator of children's and young adult library services every year at our annual conference, does two different sessions, Best New Teen, teen Books and Best New Children's Books. And next week, she's going to be on the show with you um, with a librarian here at one of our middle schools, Elkhorn Grandview Middle School, talking about new teen books that they came across for the past year. And you can see on our schedule the companion sh uh, show for that new children's books will be on January 6th, the first day of the new year. So definitely join us next week for that one and for her um, other ones and anything else we have here. And also, if you are a big Facebook user, and Compass Live is also on Facebook, go ahead and like us over there. It gets loaded. And um, I post reminders of when the show is starting, like I did here, we, if you come in on the fly. Um, when our recordings are available, I announce it on here as well, so you can see um, when recordings are available if you are a Facebook user. So if you are big on Facebook, pop over there and give us a like to keep up on what we're doing. Other than that, that wraps up for today's show. Thank you very much, and we will see you next time on Encompass Live. Bye-bye. <laughs>